This right here is a V-Core 3 by Ratrig, a premium Core XY FDM 3D printer kit. And this one right here is the Voron Design V2.4, which is also a premium Core XY FDM 3D printer that you build yourself. They cost about the same, they use the same control board, the same hot end, same build volume, and pretty similar components, but they are still surprisingly different. Today, I'm going to compare the Voron 2.4 and Ratrig V Core 3 as deeply as possible, providing as much insight as I can on things like sourcing, building, printing, and upgrading, as well as some tips, tricks, and recommendations, and of course, comparing the print quality. If you get to the end and still have questions, fill in the Q&A form in the description, and I'll answer those in a special Q&A live stream specifically on this topic. If you want to discuss with other users or just be ready for that live stream, subscribe down below and join the Vector3D Discord, also linked in that description. This video is sponsored by Filamentive. Their filament has a high percentage of recycled content, 100% in the case of this RABS 100. Every filament spool is 100% recyclable cardboard, meaning less plastic waste, and with ecology, they are planting trees and funding climate crisis solutions, offsetting one kilogram of CO2 for every one kilogram of plastic salt. Change your environmental impact today with Filamentive via the link in the video description. Every print shown in today's video was printed using Filamentive filament. While the 2.4 and Vcore 3 are both referred to as 3D printers, which they are, they're also more than that, as they have a number of different configuration options, either from the original design like the manufacturer or just modifications, making them kind of more like an ecosystem than just a printer. This makes direct comparison nigh on impossible because like, what components do you choose? Do you go with like some community decision, the lowest price ones, the highest spec, do you include mods? Well, there just isn't really a simple answer. So what I'm going to do is provide you details on my printers so you know what I'm printing with, but I'll be also trying to compare these two entire ecosystems. I'm also going to drop in special mentions for mods or upgrades that solve or improve performance. After all, you'll be building this printer, so you might as well build it the best it can be. Well, at least according to my opinion. To give you an overview of what these two printer ecosystems look like, on screen now is a table of all the important specifications that I think you need to know about these two printers. Where there are options, I've highlighted in bold the one that I'm using. If nothing's bold, then everything applies. I have modified both of my printers at this point, so neither of them are the standard design anymore. The Vcore 3 is fitted with all ABS parts, each of which has some minor modifications that I've done myself to improve printability and assembly. The fans are replaced with better quality ones that should last longer. I fitted a Dragon High Flow, the pre-production one, and Octopulse Control Board running Clipper with a Raspberry Pi 4. I should note that these are available without mods, some of them like the last ones after the Dragon Hot End. It's just not on the original machine that I was given, so I've added those in to make them to the spec that I think is better. My V2.4 is modified with the Heart PCB board for XY end stops, extruder and Z end stops, I've also modified some of the cable management and drag chains, added LED lights and used these kind of hinges with screw pins. This does still use Octopus, Dragon High Flow and Raspberry Pi 4 with Clipper, so that's the same for both printers, literally identical. The first time you looked into Voron, you probably noticed the tidy aesthetic and fast print videos and started Googling for kits. Don't worry, you're not the only one that did that. However, you probably found out quite quickly that things weren't quite right, as you couldn't find the Voron shop. There's a pretty good reason for that. There isn't one. If you want a Voron, you typically need to follow the standard sourcing guide or region-specific ones to buy all of the parts yourself. Things are changing though, as unofficial kits are starting to appear, and specialist shops have like partial kits of the things that they specialize in. Full kits obviously have the advantage of making sourcing incredibly simple. But one downside, for example, is that if you want one component slightly different, you can't exclude it from the kit. You have to buy the one you want on top of everything that's already in the kit, which was a big downside for me, as I wanted quite a few changes out of what the kit offered. What I did was buy partial kits from the specialist sellers. For example, Pouch, the kind of belt supplier, can supply all the belts, pulleys, shafts, and idlers 
in a single kit, labeled as a Voron 2.4 kit. This reduces the number of orders you have to track, your risk of buying the wrong spec, it allows you to choose your supplier, if there's multiple options available, and can potentially net you a small discount because it's all in one kit, so maybe saving on shipping at least. At the time of filming, that is exactly what I recommend you do. The only other thing you need is the printed parts, all in ABS. Ah, don't worry though, if you don't have a printer that can reliably print ABS or even ABS Plus, then you can use the Print It Forward service. PIF, or Print It Forward, is set up by Vorum. It's a, more of a community-driven effort though, in their own words, by maintaining rigorous defined standards for part providers, as well as having an initial vetting process, Voron Design can ensure people receive high quality, functional parts. Basically, you tell them the printer you're getting and the colors you want, and they'll do all the printing. There can be a pretty long queue for these parts, but the prices have been good and the quality that I received was actually really fantastic. So what about rat rig? You just buy a kit and it'll come in eight weeks, right? Well, it's not quite that simple. Ever since the launch of the V Core 3, rat rig have had trouble keeping up with demand. The reason for this keeps changing, but it does continue to be true. 12 weeks plus for shipping and delivery does not seem to be uncommon. Also, the kit isn't quite complete. One of the key components in the assembly of the electronics is the panel which your SSR, control board, power supply, etc, all that stuff, all mount to, and it's just not included. While there are drawings available on the GitHub, you're left to find your own supplier. I use Dibond Aluminium Composite for mine, which is quite easy to mark and cut with a jigsaw, and you can often get offcuts from places like eBay or just local general suppliers. It's often used for signage, so you might want to check companies that do that kind of stuff. The printed parts from Rat Rig are all PETG, which is fine for an open machine, but if you opt for their enclosure, which is a separate kit, then you'll probably want ABS or ABS Plus. Unfortunately, there isn't any service to get these, so asking the community, 3D Printing Bureau, or doing it yourself are basically your options. You could fully build in PETG first, print in AS, ABS Plus on that, and then rebuild, but that's pretty costly and time consuming to do. Comparing the two printers, the quality of Printed Forward is definitely better than the standard rat rig parts. Printed Forward use more perimeters and infill for added strength, ABS is used throughout, and the printers are really well dialed in for high quality. Damage to parts during assembly was much more common with rat rig than it was with the Voron bits. If you want to self-source your own rat rig, you can definitely do that, but it's not really set up for that quite like the Voron is meaning some parts are basically still best purchased from Ratrig. The idlers, for example, are custom made, as are some of the metal plates which kind of are used at the interfaces. The simple plates can be DIY, but please don't underestimate the challenge in making them well. AliExpress shops are starting to appear though, so you may want to keep your eyes peeled. If you source idlers that use more generic geometry, you may want to consider the self-sourced XY printed parts mod by 8complex, and that'll be linked below. Overall, you might save a little cash if you self-source, but honestly, if you want to keep the risk low and quality high, buying a single kit seems to be still the best choice. If you're interested in exactly what components to buy, watch to the end of the video. For now, I have some tips for self-sourcing parts. Number one, Voron and Ratrig unofficial Discord both have sourcing guides for mm, like multiple regions. So pay attention to these and also ask questions about anything you're not quite sure about. You don't want to be buying the wrong bits. Secondly, buy the most difficult to source parts first. Trust me, there's nothing worse than having everything you need, like borrowing this one piece that's out of stock and the price is going up and all this kind of stuff. Just buy the most difficult bits first. Thirdly, buy more screws than you need and please don't buy them from AliExpress. The reason being, hardness and tolerance of screws is important and often overlooked by the AliExpress suppliers. So find somewhere local that supplies decent quality and go for bright zinc plated as these are the best choice in my opinion. Number four, if printing your own parts, check you can get appropriate sizing and tolerancing before printing the whole batch in the wrong size with holes that are too small. And number five, get some decent tools. While you could probably assemble with an all-in-one tool you got out of a Christmas cracker, you'll have a more enjoyable time if you don't. There's no need to spend loads on Vera tools, something middle of the road will still make for a really good experience. Speaking of assembly, Both the Voron and Ratrig took a similar time to build. For me, on live streams, 
about 30 to 35 hours, but I'd expect maybe 20 to 30 when building it yourself at home. Diving into the rat rig first, they use an online Dazuki manual, and it's pretty good. It has everything you need laid out step by step, and short parts lists as you go, which is really nice. Being online, it also allows for small updates at any time. The weakest part of the manual is the frame assembly. Assembling the frame square is critical to fast, quiet motion, and low wear on the linear rails. But the rat rig process assembles the most critical components last, by which time they just go where they can go. And in my opinion, it should be updated so that the most critical parts of the frame, where the XY rails mount, is built first, and the rest of the frame just fits to it. I don't really care if my electronics error is a little bit wonky, as long as the rails are perfectly square. The other limited part of the manual is the wiring. There just isn't really much more than a single diagram to help you. I do have this all covered in my live streams though, so you can follow along there if you need a little bit more help. Like the rat rig, the frame assembly on the Voron is also challenging to get it square, but the use of blind joints does help this a little bit. The issue here is that when tightening the screws, there is a tendency for the frame to kind of twist or rotate, so it's definitely still not perfect. Continuing with the Voron, the assembly manual is, well, not so good. <laughs> Parts of the assembly just weren't very clear, and some steps had a lot going on, making it quite difficult to follow. Some sections are also quite fiddly to do, they're just not that easy. The good thing is, having had a quick scan through the Trident manual, the detail level in the assembly steps seems to be much clearer, so this looks optimistic for the future. One good example of the V2.4 design is the tensioner latch on the Z motors. This little latch just presses flush with the frame as you assemble the motor and perfectly tensions the belts. It's really simple and effective and really just pretty good. One strange omission from both manuals was some detailed instructions on lubrication. Voron explicitly state two separate lubricants in the bomb, but those I couldn't find or I didn't see or I just missed where to use them or how to use them or how to apply them. Compare this to the Caribou printer that I made last year, which came with lubricant special tools, plus assembly steps on how to use them. Lubricants are an important part of printer longevity, and so I'd like to see this reflected on the assembly manuals for both printers. Rounding off the assembly segment, I often found that the rat wig screw holes were a little bit too tight to insert the screw, and then also a bit too tight on the head to tighten them properly, which was a bit annoying. With the Voron, the hole sizes were much more appropriate, and despite the much higher complexity, everything fitted just fine. The issues with the rat wig were definitely in part due to the printed parts I was provided from those early batches, but there are also some ambitious tolerances in the CAD design. I have my own set of very slightly modified parts that fix this on my GitHub page. So that's it for all the sourcing and assembly. Let's move on now to the setup and configuration, getting things kicked off with the firmware. The Voron 2.4 design calls for a Raspberry Pi to run Clipper and two SKR 1.4 control boards to give the necessary seven stepper drivers needed to control all the motors independently. Meanwhile, in the rat rig camp, the default configuration utilizes a Duet 3 Mini 5 Plus and Mini 2 Plus expansion running RepRap firmware and no Raspberry Pi. However, I'm not using either of these configurations. For the rat rig, Right here, while the Duet 3 and Mini 5 Plus is a good control board, the rat rig configuration is not perfect, and the community has been focused on other options, so it's just overall a little bit less mature. Moving to the Big Two Tech Octopus and Raspberry Pi 4 gave me an opportunity to dry out the Core OS, which is called Rat OS by the time this video is released. This is essentially a pre configured Raspberry Pi image with just a few clipper things to configure in the setup. Mikhail Schmidt, the author and maintainer of the RatOS project, should be applauded for their efforts put into this. It makes Clipper and vCore 3 very approachable. The ongoing development efforts into RatOS is honestly fantastic, and I look forward to trying it. I'm still running the vCore OS. On the Voron side, contrary to popular belief, two is in fact not better than one. Swapping out two control boards for a single one makes things a bit easier to set up and configure, and at the very least is easier, easier to understand and less daunting. Firmware setup is a little bit more involved on the Voron, but not too difficult really. All of the steps required on the Clipper and Voron website are both very clear and pretty easy to follow. Typically, getting started with a new control board would be a little bit more involved, 
But fortunately, Big Tree Tech have provided a config file for the Octopus. This configuration wasn't perfect, but spending some time running through the detailed setup instructions does get this all pretty much ironed out. Overall, I'm definitely a big fan of how quickly Wrapped OS gets you up and running, but since I'm running identical control boards and firmware on both printers, there's really no reason I can't end up with the same feature sets on both machines. So it's kind of just a matter of configuring them. I'll provide my configuration files for both printers via a link in the description, but I do warn you against using these directly on your printer. It's best as a reference if you want to double check how I've done something. The other thing to set up before printing is of course your slicer. I've said this for a while and I'll continue to stress this point again and again. Print profiles are the most important part of a quality 3D print. It really doesn't matter how good your printer could be if you use a terrible slicer profile, the prints will just be bad. It's that simple. When doing my original review for the vCore 3, there were no official print profiles available, but there are now, which is great. The Voron has slicer profiles available too, so after the firmware is all kind of sorted and configured, it's pretty easy to get both printers running. Comparing the RatRig to the Voron profiles that I have, I'd say the Voron one is better optimized. They are quite similar, but with a few little differences. The Voron profile has some smart manipulation of line width. By having much thicker lines like 0.6 on a 0.4 nozzle, you can reduce the number of lines needed to complete infill of a certain percentage, which saves time. The speeds are quite a bit different between the two profiles though. On average, the rat rig uses higher speeds by about 20 or 30%, but this didn't always translate to faster prints due to the other differences in the settings like the one I just mentioned. Overall, it does seem that the Voron profile has been a little bit better tuned to achieve both good quality by having low perimeter speeds while also achieving faster printing with a clever line width manipulation. But you know what? You could just run the Voron profile on the rat rig and as always, you'll achieve better results than me just by taking the time to tune your profile for the filaments that you use. And of course, the specific hardware that you're using. We'll take a look at the print quality later on. For now, let's look at how each of these printers are to use on a day-to-day -day basis. Noise levels seem to have become a bit of a polarizing issue as some users neglect it completely in favor of maximum performance, especially in that speedboat race. However, I'm in a small flap where my printers are never far away, so I prefer to keep the noise levels sensible, if possible. As I mentioned in the original vCore 3 review, premium printers like these tend to use linear rails rather than the low-cost V-slot wheels found on many Ender 3 style printers. This is inherently more noisy, so be sure to keep your expectations tempered when buying either of these machines. There are a couple of ways to keep noise to a minimum with linear rails though, alignment and lubrication. While the vCore 3 frame is undeniably strong and sturdy, it's hard to get square, as I mentioned before, and once assembled, you can't really make any adjustments to it without taking the entire printer to pieces. With the Voron, along with the frame being easier to get square in the first place, the gantry, which holds the XY rails, is much easier to adjust right at the end of the assembly allowing you to get the rails all really nicely aligned for the lowest, lowest possible noise. For lubrication, it's not too difficult on either printer, but you will need a syringe and a flat tipped needle to get the lubricant into the end of the carriages. Placing it directly on the rails, like it kind of does work, but most will just get wiped off. So direct application inside the carriage is definitely the better. And it can be done on both printers entirely, every carriage without having to do any disassembly. So that's pretty good. The biggest culprit for noise on many 3D printers is the fans. The ones included with the vCore 3 were low quality, noisy, and didn't last very long. So I replaced those pretty quickly with the 5 volt Noctua you can perhaps see, and a 12 volt 5015 Sunon. These high quality fans have already outlasted the original ones and are also significantly quieter. I'd recommend both of these to anyone. The Voron sourcing guide suggests GDS time fans, which I didn't go for because I had some generic ones already available, and also Winsim fans, which are the poor quality ones that I had on my vehicle 3. The ones I have are surviving at the moment, but I wouldn't necessarily expect these to last that long. I personally think it's high time that 3D printing had some purpose-made specialist fans. I think that would be just fantastic. Another source for noise, although a little bit less common, is the belt idlers. The vCore 3 uses a bespoke idler, but these have had issues since the start. I'm still running the original set at the moment. They are worn, but I do have their improved V2 design, 
which I'll be installing pretty soon. On the Voron side, I've had no noise or wear issues on the pouch idlers yet. The last significant factor for noise is an enclosure. The enclosure on my V2.4 reduces noise levels by around 6 decibels, which is pretty significant difference. It also affects different frequencies in different ways, so changes the overall tone of the noise, which for me kind of really helps. I'll get an enclosure on my V-Core 3 eventually, and that will be mainly for the enclosure temperatures, but the noise reduction will be a nice side benefit. Another impact on the day-to-day -day functionality is of course having sensors to monitor things. Despite being two of the most expensive hobby slash prosumer 3D printers, both of these have some glaring emissions. Neither has any filament runout sensor, fan RPN sense, power loss detection, or jam detection included. None of these features need to be particularly expensive to implement, so if you need these, you could do it yourself. It just seems a little bit strange to me that given how smart and expensive these machines are with other features, the lack of these things that have been around a while is just isn't it a bit peculiar. Regarding weight and portability, neither of these are built to be moved. The 2.4 and Vcore 3 weigh 12.9 and 16.6 kilos respectively. While the more rigid outer frame of the Vcore 3 makes it a little bit easier to hold on to, both really need two people to move them, especially if you're going more than a couple of meters. My top tip would be don't bother moving it, just control it from a distance using a Raspberry Pi. Speaking of, as both of these machines utilize Clipper, which runs on a Raspberry Pi, it's good practice to shut down Clipper before removing the power to prevent SD card corruption. I've been told off by viewers on multiple occasions for pulling power without safely shutting down first. I've continued to do this even though I said I'd stop, mainly because it's just a fiddle to have to log into the web interface just so I can turn off the printer. What I'd really like is a physical switch on the front of either printer, both printers, which safely turns off all the high power components and maybe just leaves the Raspberry Pi running. Something much more similar to how a desktop computer works, for example. I've searched the Voron mods page and can't find anything quite like this at the moment, but I think it'd be possible, so it's so maybe just something I'll look into if it does keep bugging me. Let's take a look at some stuff about reliability, starting with end stops and bed leveling. Both the Vcore 3 and 2.4 have quirky bed leveling techniques, or should I say axis tramming techniques. The rat rig bed is mounted to a three point kinematic coupling and three independent Z axis lead screws. A bed probe is used to detect the average play of the bed and adjust the whole thing accordingly. In addition to this, the probe is also used to create a mesh of the bed to compensate for any warping or bending of the aluminium cast plate. The Vaughan, on the other hand, has four independent belt driven Z axes that uses an inductive probe on the extruder carriage to detect the bed and make the adjustments. The stock firmware, however, has no implementation methods for creating a bed mesh, but the firmware is capable, so it's quite easy to add. The only annoying part for me with the belted Z is that when changing filament after a long print, the idle timeout has often finished and therefore the motors have turned off completely. This means that when purging filament by hand, the downward force is enough to turn the motors and then the QGL, which is the probing sequence, then fails on the next print because of that. I've increased the idle timeout length to try and deal with this, but the motors and heaters all use the same timer and I really don't want the heaters to stay on for like two hours just in case something goes wrong. The importance of the Vcore 3's kinematic coupling should not be understated. When you heat materials, they expand. So when you heat your bed, that also expands. If it's rigidly mounted to anything that doesn't heat and expand at the same rate, it will cause distortion. Kinematic couplings are a special type of mounting that allow for this expansion without distortion, which will improve the reliability and consistency of your first layers. The Vaughan, however, rigidly mounts the bed to the frame. The manual instructs variable screw tightness to deal with thermal expansion, but I'm not convinced that's a great solution. With everything calibrated, I found I can get reliable prints actually every time, as long as I'm using the same material and waiting long periods to ensure thermal stability before printing. Again, it's not great, but it does work. This brings me on to the homing and probing mechanisms as I've just kind of brushed over them so far. The rat rig uses standard XY end stops and then a BL touch for everything on the Z. The Voron uses standard XY end stops, a nozzle touch Z end stop, 
and an inductive probe for the QGL gantry levelling and mess compensation if you set it up. The rat rig system works really well and with Clipper you can set the BL touch into a kind of permanently deployed state where you can probe repeatedly without it having to retract and deploy again and again. For a reasonably fast bed mesh that works really well. The Vaughan on the other hand has been more problematic for two reasons. Because the Z end stop is separate from the bed, thermal expansion is not accounted for in the Z end stop distance. If you always print at the same temperatures, that's fine, you'll get very consistent results. But changing to PLA requires quite a significant Z offset for me. This is likely also impacted by the Z end stop using nozzle contact. If there's any filament left on the nozzle, the Z end stop will trigger sooner than it should, so for best results, just make sure you wait 10 or 15 minutes of preheat to make sure everything's soft and in the right position and expanded and stable and all that kind of stuff. And then it works okay. Using the probe accuracy command built into Clipper, I was able to get a picture of how reliable the BL touch and inductive probes are. These tests were done firstly at room temperature and then repeated at printing temperatures of 240C nozzle and 100C on the bed just to see how they react and change with temperature. In the cold test, the vCore 3 definitely provides better results, with less than half the range and half the standard deviation compared to Vora. However, when we include the hot results, the story is quite different. Despite expecting the 2.4 results to be the worst due to the temperature sensitive inductive probe, the standard deviation is actually slightly lower, as is the range. Conversely, the vCore 3 has vastly increased range by three times and standard deviation by over four times. Voron definitely wins this one, despite my expectations being the reverse. There is a highly recommended Voron probe mod that I'll look into soon called the Clicky Probe. This is a mechanical end stop probe that magnetically attaches to the carriage, just for probing, and then it's kind of deposited onto a carrier. If you're having trouble with bed probing, this is maybe something worth taking a look at. Of course, one component of a good first layer is the print surface. The print surface on the vCore 3 at least for my version, is a rough single-sided powder-coated PEI from Prima Creator, like a brand or similar to 3D Prima. I was a little critical of this surface in my original review, but I've since started to like it a little bit more as it's been pretty reliable and durable. It also hasn't needed significant cleaning yet and is still holding parts pretty well. The surface on my 2.4 is a very different beast though. This is the Filiprint RS print surface from Filifarm, whom sponsored the series. The adhesion properties are extremely strong and sensitive to distance. Get the nozzle too close and your prints will be more stuck than you can ever imagine. It's also very sensitive to finger oils and cannot be cleaned with the IPA, acetone or other harsh chemicals. The surface is very durable though, and I've not had to clean it yet other than the initial spa visit when it was new. During the testing process, the Prima Creator build plate was easier to deal with, as I was constantly changing filaments and temperatures, and this plate was more accommodating of those differences. However, when I'm just printing the same material, same prints, in a row again and again and again, I do kind of generally prefer the filler print. Sustaining the performance of your 3D printer though, demands maintenance, and how easy it is to do can have an impact on how often a mere human would bother to do it. The first part of doing maintenance is getting the parts you need, assuming you need to re replace something. For the Voron, this would be fairly straightforward, especially if you fully self-sourced, as you could basically just go back to the same shop you bought the original component from and buy the same thing again. The problem is that over time, there's absolutely no guarantee that any seller will continue selling the same or even similar parts. It's almost entirely reliant on the popularity of the printer and profitability of the parts as to whether you'll be able to find spares when you need them. My personal hope is that the design continues to develop alongside part availability in order to support those that are already bought into owning Avora. Fortunately, the open source nature and strong community engagement should probably help this longevity. For the vCore 3, if you bought directly from RatRig, definitely go back to them for spares. They have a large selection of parts, including the custom metal plates, controllers, hot ends and fans, but I actually can't find anywhere to buy the idlers. Of course, you have the normal issues with businesses closing and no longer providing support, but fingers crossed this is not on the horizon, and again the open source and strong community involvement will definitely help. We'll talk more about that later though. Assuming you have the parts, 
how easy is it to actually replace things and do maintenance on these printers. The Voron's detachable hot end area can make replacement of any components there or dealing with a jammed hot end relatively easy if you also have the Heart PCB mod, which I highly recommend by the way. The hot end assembly on the Vcore 3 ever is designed to be very easy to upgrade to be completely different hot end as well, so it's pretty well equipped with this kind of operation too. Replacing fans on both printers is quite easy, definitely easier on the Vcore 3 due to the kind of more open extruder design. Replacing idlers is quite a job on both printers as they require cutting the belts short after the like, initial assembly and only the Vcore 3 has enough adjustment in the tensioning mechanisms to make reattachment feasible without going absolutely stark crazy. If you do need to replace these, expect this to take quite a while and you may need new belts. Next, let's take a look at some of the peak performance characteristics of both of these printers. The most common questions I get asked about the Vcore 3 and 2.4 is things like, which one can print fastest? And which has better acceleration? Which is the highest maximum speed? But honestly, I think that's kind of the wrong question. As you've likely seen from the speedboat race, speed and acceleration are inversely proportional to quality. Yes, you can print a Benchy in 10 minutes or less, but let's be honest, it's not the print that you'd sell to a customer or show to your other half to justify your purchase. The highest straight line speed you can achieve on both printers is kind of the same because they both use the same hot end and it's nearly always your ability to push plastic that limits your ability to go faster. This is somewhere around 25 cubic millimeters per second, which at 0.2 millimeter layer height and 0.4 millimeter line width is somewhere around 350 millimeters per second. But let's be honest, nobody just prints straight lines. At least, <laughs> I hope not. When it comes to acceleration, both the 2.4 and Vcore 3 use the input shaper from Clipper. During the tuning process, an input shaper type and maximum recommended acceleration are suggested. These maximum suggested accelerations are what I'm going to be comparing. As both machines are Core XY, we can almost guarantee that the maximum acceleration on X will be higher than on Y. Also, since mass is a significant component in maximum acceleration, the larger format machines, like the Vcore 3 goes up to 500, with heavier gantries will always have lower peak acceleration. Uh, lastly, since Clipper only uses one acceleration value for X and Y, we must always focus on the lowest of the two values. So these are my results. Despite how technical this test method is, I'm not sure it's really the best determination for peak acceleration, as it's more about input shaping and you can definitely go past what's recommended. But it seems reasonable to assume that a more rigid machine would allow for higher suggested acceleration values, hence this being my method. I think the main contributors to these differences are the 9mm wide belts used on the Vehicle 3, the slightly lighter weight of ever due to a little bit less plastic, and the 3030 extrusion used in the main frame, creating a really rigid structure. That said, the addition of panels to the exterior of a printer can have a massive impact on its rigidity if integrated in a structural way, so it may be worth me retesting when I have enclosures for both printers. Next, let's take a look at temperatures, heat up times, and things like that. Since they have a similar hot end, heat up time and max temperatures are theoretically the same. In practice, I found this also to be true, with equal times from room temperature to 240 Celsius to be around 2 minutes and 23 seconds. For the same size bed, however, rat rigs specify 600 watts rather than the 450 watts found on the Voron. Comparing bed heating times, the Vcore 3 got up to 100 Celsius in 2 minutes 57, just under 3 minutes, while the 450 watt Voron took much longer, around 8 minutes and 1 second. Very similar beds, but very different heater power make a huge difference. Both printers are okay to 110 Celsius though. For starting a print, I normally leave the enclosure on my 2.4 for about 15 to 20 minutes to heat up to temperature before I start printing when it's ABS. For the Vcore 3 though, just being, well, it's open, so I just get on with it. It just prints when it's up to temperature. With all this talk of high temperatures though, picks my anxiety just a little bit, so let's calm things down with a chat about safety. Starting with firmware, I'm testing for MinTemp, MaxTemp and Thermal Runaway Protection. 
These tests are really easy to do and I recommend you do them on every printer you own just in case they're disabled or not implemented correctly. It literally takes two minutes. As expected, since both printers run the same firmware, the results were basically identical. Both printers passed all three tests, detecting the problem, providing an error message and putting the printer into an error state. One observation I did make was that although most fans were set to 100%, neither printer enabled the part cooling fan at all when hitting any of these errors. For some reason, the fan section for the printed part fan has shut down speed at zero by default, while all others are set to one. This explains the behavior which I saw, but something I'd really like to see changed on the Clipper firmware. To fix this, in the printer.cfg file, identify the fan section and make sure it has the line shut down speed one. This will then ensure that the part fan will go to 100% when the firmware enters an error state. RATOS had this implemented in less than an hour after I mentioned it to Mikkel, so that's already sorted. Just make sure you update. In terms of electrical safety in wiring, the Voron takes a big, big leap forward over the Vehicle 3 and every other printer I can think of that I've looked at, with pre-made harnesses available as a mod using high quality heliflon wiring, full implementation of drag chains for all three axes, and appropriate wire gauge and connectors used at every single point. It could definitely do with some improvements with the wire management in the lower compartment, and there should definitely be zip ties at the ends of both, oh, well, all of the drag chains, but other than that, it's still really very good. The VCOR 3 is let down a bit here. There are no drag chains at all, no provided solution for strain relief, and the wire management in the electronics compartment does exist. It's better than the Voron, but still quite lackluster. While drag chains are not essential, some robust design for strain relief using spring steel straps or 2.85 millimeter nylon filament, I would consider a minimum. For the Z-axis, there is some basic strain relief at the bed, but the cables are left loose between the carriage and the pass-through, so fatigue over time would definitely not be a surprise. And well, I do accept that the Z-axis moves far less than X and Y, but it's still possible. As I've mentioned previously, there's very little in terms of instructions when it comes to wiring the vehicle 3. The standard design has no enclosure for the electronic compartment at all, so there'd be nothing covering the main circuitry in this area. It honestly frustrates me quite a bit that even a few months after this print is released, things like details of electrical installation are still not included and strain relief systems have not been fully implemented. What's more, it seems their design efforts at the moment are fully concentrated on the upcoming V Minion and new Vcast versions instead of sorting issues on existing designs. One thing that both printers do correctly, thankfully, is specifying the correct type of 240 volt switch, a dual pole type which cuts the live and neutral wires when in the off position. They both also implement a thermal fuse for the bed, which I'm tremendously glad about. Something on the rat rig that I prefer over the Vorum is the placement of the electronics compartment, like so. I personally feel that having it at the back of the printer is much better than the underside. With the 2.4, I have to flip the entire printer on its side or even the back, whereas the Vcore 3, I can just rotate it and it's there. Lastly, air treatment. The Vcore 3 that I have has clearly no enclosure, so there's no filter or air treatment at all. The Voron 2.4 design has an air filter with a carbon foam material that should filter the air. I'm not convinced that it works that well and I don't have any means to actually test this unfortunately so it's hard to be certain but I'm not sure even the fan is powerful enough to provide the needed pressure so yeah. I've had lots of recommendations to try the Nevermore filter though which is a recirculating type so if you're looking to use a filter then you may want to give that one a go. Overall the Voron is definitely the safer printer mainly due to improved documentation and maturity of modification kits, as well as implementation of drag chains. Speaking of mods though, what are the options for upgrading these machines and how easy are they to get hold of? Starting with the Voron then, there is an organized repository where you can find community designed modifications for each different Voron design, the 0.1 Trident and 2.4 and many shops have these bespoke design parts for those mods for sale, so you can integrate them into your bill of materials as you first build the printer. Some examples of mods that are recommended are on screen now. The Clicky Probe is a micro switch probe with magnetic attachment. 
the Nevermore filter is a recirculating air filter, 270 degree hinges allow the doors to be opened more, and the ABBN is an afterburner replacement that claims to improve airflow for the cold end and part cooling. Each of these mods are fairly easy to acquire parts for, they're all pretty well documented and have lots of community users that you can ask for help. Moving on to the rat rig, the vCore 3 mods are all held in a thread on a Discord channel and many are also in a vCore 3 community on Thingiverse. The vCore 3 has not been out as long as the 2.4 so the mods are definitely a little bit less mature and the slightly less organised setup has resulted in some replication as people can't find what they're after so they design their own or they just go without. There are definitely some fantastic options available though, including the eight complex XY modifications that I talked about earlier, allowing for standard size idlers, lots of ADXL mounts and cable organizers and other stuff like that. Overall, the mod selection is definitely strong for both printers with lots of upgrade options, including ways to overcome missing features like filament sensors, which I mentioned earlier. At the time of writing, the Voron takes the crown here due to its organization and maturity but I do look forward to the vCore 3 having something similar in the future, hopefully, fingers crossed. In an environment of tinkering DIY and modifications though, having a community for help, support and inspiration makes an enormous difference to not only your success with the product, but also your enjoyment of it. From my experience, the root of the Voron and Ratry communities has been Discord. The Ratwig Discord is actually unofficial and the Facebook group is actually bigger as well, but I've had much better results talking in Discord than on Facebook. I had my concerns when getting involved in building a Voron because I heard that the community can be a little bit unpleasant to deal with at times, but fortunately this has not really been the case for me. I spent most of my time in the Brexited channel for UK users and found them really very helpful with sources, suggestions, sharing, info, answering questions and all kinds of stuff. They were just really helpful. The Rat Rig unofficial Discord though is another step up in that community feeling. They're very helpful, welcoming, thankful and just generally good to chat with. I'd highly recommend joining if you're thinking of building any Rat Rig printer or other product. It would be amiss for me to mention though that there is a new Discord specifically for the Vector 3D community, so if you want to chat about all sorts of 3D printing, the workbench, Voron, Rat Rig and other video topics, you can join that by the link below. While, as I've said, both communities are strong and good, is this really enough to support the printers? When spending this much on a 3D printer, both the Voron and Vcore 3 are well over $1,000, you will have some expectations for long-term support, typically from the company that supplied it to you. Well, that doesn't really work the same way now. While both of these printers are open source, the method by which the engineering hours turned into CAD designs was different. The Voron design team is a group of volunteers, while Ratrake is a commercial business. At this point, these differences may not seem important, but if you consider how long you want your printer to last and what could happen to these two entities, it starts to be a little bit of a different conversation. On one hand, the volunteering aspect of Voron design means that they don't necessarily rely on the typical business financial metrics to make their project worthwhile. After all, they don't even sell the printers they design. On the other hand, volunteering time is limited, interests can change and life is just a vast array of responsibilities and they can all get in the way of projects we're highly passionate about. With Ratrig, they're incentivized to make a profit, grow the business, develop their new products and then rinse and repeat. But of course, a business can still fail. I'm not suggesting Voron Design are about to disband or that Ratrig is going to fold imminently. My point is that they're fundamentally different in the way they function and operate and maybe it's worth investing in whichever you feel most comfortable with. Ultimately, I don't have any answers for you here, but I think it'll be interesting to look back on in five years and see where both of these places are at. So putting Doomsday to the side though, what is the support? Well, Voron support is the Discord channel, which means it's purely information based and there isn't any guarantee that you get the right information from the right person. It's basically public chat, so anyone that sees the message can provide an answer. Although obviously, you know who to get the right answer from as they're kind of listed in the side on the Discord. Of course, this can be a good thing as you can potentially get answers to weird questions at any time of day, but it also means that you risk being given the wrong information. Hopefully it goes without saying at this point, but there is no warranty, no spares. If you need new parts, you have to go and buy them yourself. 
Rat rig, on the other hand, is a bit more conventional. I'm not aware of any organized ticketing system for the support yet, but it seems to be mostly handled through emails and the Facebook groups. If parts break or wear out, like the idlers, they also seem to be sending out new parts as replacements, which is promising. As with a lot of things with rat rig at the moment though, they do seem to be a little overwhelmed, so response times can be a little slow. But I've had people confirm that they had very fast responses, so who knows. Neither system is perfect, but they do seem to be doing a reasonable job of meeting the expectations of the customers even though Voron owners are sort of not customers in the traditional sense. Support can come in a variety of different ways though, like making CAD models available. With both the 2.4 and vCore 3 being open source, I think it's important to see how open they really are, as it's not uncommon for open source to be treated quite poorly with nothing more than some early version step files that never get updated and even have errors in them. For the vCore 3, the typical access route to important files is via GitHub. This is where you can find all the STLs for the 3D printed files and DXFs for cutting enclosure panels, the bed, etc. I wouldn't call this really open source though, so is there any more? Well, yeah, a lot actually. It's quite easy to miss, but on the main GitHub page, there is a hyperlink to CAD in Onshape, which is literally all the 3D models in one. I gave a lot of praise for this in the original review and don't get me wrong, it's good, but still not quite open source in my opinion. For true source, I need to see the CAD sketches and features that make up each 3D model. There are plenty of companies that claim to be fully open source that are less open source than RatRig, so they're doing a good job, but not quite 100% there in my opinion. Foron is basically the same. GitHub is used for the main distribution of STL files and controlling versions, and a Fusion 360 model is made available to download, but it's just dumb solids, there's no actual like proper feature tree with sketches and features. This method of doing things where you only get dumb solids is definitely sufficient for like 95% of the things you'll need. But I'd like to see the source files really. Okay, you've waited long enough now. Let's take a look at the print quality, starting with bridging and overhangs. For bridge testing, I've used my directional bridge test in RPLA. Performance is measured based on the thickness of the bridge if the filament touches the print surface, it's a fail for that direction. Both printers are equipped with fans that blow along the x-axis, and this seems to result in similar dimensional performance. However, the V2.4 dropped a strand on the Y+, resulting in a fail. The VCore 3 wins this one by a bit. Now, my directional overhang test, again in RPLA. Overhangs of 55 to 5 degrees are tested, where 90 degrees would be a vertical wall. Performance is measured based on the steepness at which quality starts to degrade. The smaller the angle, the better. The good news is that both printers were able to successfully print 45 degree overhangs in all directions, which is about what we typically expect. Vaughan was definitely more even across the board, while the Vcore 3 had slightly larger variants. Disappointingly, when trying to put these tests into practice, printing the Eastman Darth Vader bust, the Vaughan failed completely, with the overhang curling so much and disturbing the hot end that I decided to stop the print. The VCore 3 was definitely doing better, but due to a misplaced mouse click when waking the computer from sleep, I left a massive blob of filament on it and also decided to stop that print. Overall, nothing exceptional here, but not too bad either, unless you're printing a lot of PLA with ambitious overhangs. The cooling performance is definitely something that could be improved. Smooth round surfaces are one of the places where inconsistencies start to show up that you may not have noticed with more intricate parts. So I've tested the Gear Anderson Cat in RPLA for organic curves and this main bucket part of the drippy bucket in RABS 100 for less organic curves. Looking at the bucket first, well, they're both basically perfect. No wobble, no inconsistent layers, no weird extrusion blobs, no warping either, it's just all round pretty good. Looking at the cap, both printers have basically no blemishes in the outer surface, layers are aligned, and extrusion seems consistent. I mean, this print is basically identical from both machines, and it's actually incredible how good these look. Looking at the supports, I wasn't able to remove the support on the gear around as a cap with my hands alone, because the print settings I've used extrudes a line all the way around the perimeter of the support material, which makes it like extra rigid, and more reliable, but also a little bit harder to remove. 
The supports themselves, though, are both printed well. No disturbances, no gaps, no Z-waddle wobble or poor extrusion. I don't use supports a lot, but these both look pretty much perfect to me, as long as you have a tool to remove them or just turn off the extra strong perimeter setting. So I think this is another draw. For examining retractions, I've got two objects, my directional string test in RPLA and part of the Nevermore filter, the recirculating filter we talked about earlier, in our ABS 100. Starting with my test piece, the Voron one is near perfect. There is some very light stringing on locations between the smaller towers, but those towers are really well formed. I've broken one of them, handling them as they're less than one millimeter across. The rat rig one is okay. There's no dense stringing, just wispy bits, but it's present between like basically all of the towers in all directions. Weirdly, the retraction on my v 3 profile is one millimeter, while only 0.65 on the Voron. So I would have expected less stringing, but that doesn't appear to be the case. I could speculate on reasons for this, but it's definitely different. Looking at a more real world test, the Nevermore filter component, and also changing the material to ABS, the differences are no longer visible. Looking really close, it seems the vertical parts of the mesh are slightly less well formed on the v 3 compared to the Voron. But this is a real nitpick though. They're both darn good and probably indistinguishable to most people looking at them from a reasonable distance. For examining some finer details, I've got this print in place clip and a wobbly leg alien thing. Uh, both printed in RPLA. Starting with the clip, this one didn't go well really for the V-Core 3. Unfortunately, everything got a bit stuck together on the V-Core 3, so when trying to rotate the joints, use the clip, remove supports, etc., it snapped at both pivots on both clips. So yeah, not great. From looking closely, it looks like the first layer above the support material is just not very good, and also the pin seems to have gotten stuck in the hole. So a bit unfortunate there. The Voron, on the other hand, printed this piece just fine. The supports came away easily, and with a quick snap, the clip was able to be used, and with a reasonable amount of force too. Uh, where is it? I've lost it. Well done, me. On this wobbly-legged alien thing, uh, this is one that both printers struggled with, really. Um, they both did an excellent job with all their like small retractions and first layer with all their till like leg components, uh, but they really struggled with joining the kind of skirt around the main body to the rest of the body, often pushing those little bits away from the printer in that process and just making a general mess. Although I did no XY calibration specifically on either machine, I did want to try my 150mm dimensional test just to see what kind of results we get. While not hugely scientific, this test indicates that both printers are performing similarly in terms of out-the-box calibration, being around 0.3 to 0.4%, undersized on the outer dimensions. The Vaughan is closer to the goal, so does win, I guess, but only just. Both could do with some calibration. For all my test objects that you've seen here that I've designed myself, they'll be for sale on my website soon with some guides on how to use them. It seems like I've printed a lot of PLA in the testing, and that's true just for the dimensional stability on stuff, but I have printed a lot of ABS on both of these printers too, and they both did that reasonably well. Although the modified RABS stuck a little bit too well on the Voron, that really does stick well, both printers printed these handles, which are kind of for the 2.4, really well. You do get a little bit of curl on the v 3 with these kind of slightly larger ABS prints, but it's not a lot. If you do want to do ABS a lot more on the v 3 I'd probably recommend getting an enclosure, just it's just going to be much easier for you. For PLA in general, you've seen a lot of PLA prints already, and both printers do get some incredible results, as long as there's no steep overhangs, as neither printer was very good in terms of cooling. PLA can print pretty fast, but for best results, you need to cool it fast too. So if you're printing smaller objects, you just won't get the speed benefits that these printers can provide. They just don't have the cooling capacity. With an enclosure fitted, it's worth keeping the doors open to print PLA as you want all the cooling you can get. With PETG, the v 3's retraction issue really shined in a bad way. <laughs> the Deadpool bust is just stringing all over the place, but a bit of drying and tuning would probably deal with that. I've heard reports that the early version of the Dragon High Flow Hot End, which is what I've got fitted on the v 3, was a little bit dribbly, so this may have impacted my retraction results on the V-Core 3. That said, at least the V-Core 3 finished that print. The Voron failed, again, purely because of curling on the overhangs. 
it just can't really do overhangs past 45 degrees. I do need to try the ABBN or the upcoming Stealth Burner, which is direct from Voron versus a mod, to see if that improves things. Let's move on to my final Vodex and buying suggestion. So today we've looked at two titans of modern hobby 3D printing. Which one do you buy and what parts do you get for it? On the electronic side, I'm really happy with my choices of the 50 watt heater, E3D thermistor, Dragon High Flow Hot End and Big Tree Tech Octopus Control Board. Maybe even the high voltage Octopus Control Board if you fancy. I wouldn't recommend the Raspberry Pi 4 purely because of the price and it's a little bit overkill. The Pi Zero W2 seems to be doing well with Clipper, so I'd go for that or the Raspberry Pi 3B as they're just cheaper options. A nickel plated copper nozzle or even the Bontex CHT nozzle are going to be the best options for high flow, depending on your material. Obviously switch to hardened steel or nozzle X or something for your abrasive filaments. For fans, the Noctua and Sunon on the VCAR 3 are excellent, so I definitely recommend those. I'll be looking for something high quality like this to put on my 2.4 when I can. In terms of modifications, the VCAR 3 definitely benefits from electrical management as well as like the strain relief. So I've got modifications for those. You can find them on the GitHub. For the 2.4, I would highly recommend the PCB mods from Heart. They've been absolutely fantastic, as well as the Heliflon uh, Lineo harness that I've used. That's also worked very, very well. I'll be testing more mods in the future and we'll give you some other recommendations when, you know, when that comes around. So in terms of deciding which printer to get then, the incredibly strong frame of the VCore 3 gives it the advantage on paper, with the input shape of results suggesting its ability to deal with higher acceleration. The instructions were pretty good, but not perfect, but the damage to the parts during the build and annoyingly overtight tolerances have really stuck with me. Not to mention my concerns with safety and deviation of design resources to new projects are both a big deal for me. VCore OS though, what a breath of fresh air for Clipper and VCore 3, a firmware that's been so difficult or just intimidating to get started with. The print consistency with changing material all the time was really pretty good too, so if you do a lot of various kind of things all over the shop, then that'd be pretty good. The Voron has made a big splash over the last couple of years, and rightly so. The quad gantry leveling is functional, it looks cool, and it works pretty well. The design aesthetic is fantastic. The implementation of drag chains is definitely the best I've seen on any printer. The resurgence of ABS printing into a heated enclosure, again, something that, AB, uh, that Voron is pushing really well, and it's absolutely doing great. The prolific use of mods is good and bad thing in my opinion. The initial design is good, but the mods allow you to keep adding new features, and that I really like. The Voron was quite annoying to assemble though. Viewers in my live streams could see that at times I lost some of the enjoyment because it just wasn't really clear what to do. So what do I suggest? Well, if you want to buy a kit in a single purchase, get a rat rig. But if you're happy to self-source and want that kind of challenge and to make your own component decisions, then the Voron's definitely open to you. If you need a build volume, over what the Vaughan can provide, obviously go for the rat rig. If you're really worried about managing the mechanical assembly or firmware setup, go for the rat rig. Rat OS will really help you. If you want to print ABS all the time, get a Voron. For PLA, neither have amazing cooling, but the VCOR 3 is definitely better. For PETG, uh, just flip a coin. If you'd rather keep rebuilding a printer than actually printing with it, get a Voron and just continuously mod it there'll be a lot of fun. If you can't afford either of these printers but still want to print ABS, I'd recommend taking a look at the Voron V0. It is still quite expensive at around six to eight hundred dollars pounds money units depending on where you are, but it's a neat little printer that will get you started with ABS. Ultimately though, if you want great print quality, a community of interesting people, an educational experience and a whole lot of fun along the way, get either and just start enjoying 3D printing. Thanks again to Filamentive for sponsoring. I'll see you in the next one.